Aside from broadcast, sequences are one of the most powerful features in Chatfuel. Essentially, sequences, like you would see in email, are a drip campaign where you can send information to users over time based on a certain action that they take, such as signing up for your newsletter. In Chatfuel, the beauty is that there's so many different ways to use this, whether it's doing an onboarding sequence like you would do an email, whether it's sending people a campaign after they've purchased a product, or even retargeting people who don't complete a lead form and essentially sending them an abandonment reminder. So I'll show you a couple different ways that you can do that right now. In the welcome message, let's start by creating a simple onboarding sequence. So to do that, I'll just add some text here and say, hi, greet the user by their first name. And then to subscribe people to a sequence, first I need to create the sequence. So I'm gonna click here to add a sequence. I'll call it onboarding. And then I see the series of messages here. Of course, I could add as many messages or delete a couple and use as few as I want. But before we edit the content, let's actually subscribe users who get to the welcome message. So to do that, I'm going to click the subscribe to sequence plugin and then subscribe them by typing in the name of that specific sequence. If I wanted to, of course, I could add a filter here and only subscribe people who meet a certain criteria, such as those who speak a certain language. But in this case, we're gonna be super inclusive and subscribe everybody to that sequence. Great, so all of this is set up. Now, what I need to do is go into the onboarding sequence here. Of course, I can then edit the messages, add images, buttons, videos, text, whatever I could possibly imagine, really. Now, the key here, one of the points of confusion for many users is the timing here that's set up. What you wanna do when you're setting the timing here is think of there being like a plus symbol in math between each of these days, right? So this says after one day, after one day, after one day. This doesn't mean that all three of these messages are sending one day after the user gets subscribed on the welcome message. These are the timings in between each message. So in other words, this block two is gonna send one day after the previous message. Block three is gonna send one day after the previous message. So for example, if I changed this to seven days and this to three days, we would add each of these. So this first block would send the day after the user subscribes in the welcome message. This next one would send eight days after the user subscribes in the welcome message. And this final one would send 11 days after the user subscribes. So keep that in mind. The math adds together for each of them. It's not time after the user subscribes at the beginning. So this is just a basic sequence that I've created. Similar to what I talked about in the broadcast tab, you notice the return of these tags here for each of these messages. And it works the same way in the broadcast tab. Again, I'll go into more detail in the next lesson on broadcasting policies. But basically, if the message you're crafting here is promotional in nature, you need to make sure that this tag is set to update. So Facebook will only send it to people who will be qualified to receive that message to ensure that you're not violating any messenger policies. So again, if you're sending any sort of promotional content here, you gotta use the update tag. If you're just sending educational content, subscription will work just fine. So keep that in mind. Now, a couple more things to mention. One is retargeting and sending those like lead abandonment form reminders, for example. So let's create a new group and I'll show you how that's done. So let's call this like a lead form and I will create a couple questions here. So first let's ask, what is your favorite color as an obscure example? And let's give them either black or white. And then let's say we'll ask them for their user email as well. And we'll save this to email if they enter it. Cool. So what we want to do here is at the very beginning, at the top of the lead form, anybody who gets here, we're going to subscribe them to a follow-up sequence saying, hey, you didn't finish the lead form. Do you want to continue it? And then at the very end of it, if they make it all the way through, then that's great. We're going to unsubscribe them so they don't get that reminder. So what I'm gonna do is create a new sequence and I'll call this lead abandonment. We're just gonna send one message. So we'll delete these extraneous sequence messages here that are set by default. Okay, cool. So we'll call this block reminder, for example. 
and we'll say, looks like you didn't complete the form, wanna finish it now. And then we could have a like yes button that will take them back to that lead form block. So now what we have to do is super simple, right? So as I mentioned at the top here, we will subscribe them to the sequence and we'll subscribe them to the lead abandonment sequence. And then if they don't make it all the way until the end, they'll still get that sequence. But if they do submit their email, they've completed it, and then we're going to unsubscribe them so they don't get that follow-up reminder because obviously it wouldn't be relevant to them at that point. So we'll call this lead abandonment, and there we go, right? So user goes in, they're immediately subscribed to this reminder. If they don't complete the lead form in one day where they would get unsubscribed, then they're gonna get that message one day later. So that's another way that you can use sequences intelligently to retarget people and optimize for your conversions. Just a couple other quick best practices to mention here are that whenever you're using sequences, especially if you're just testing them yourself, you need to make sure that your bot is connected to an actual Facebook page. If you're just using chat fuel in its test mode when the bot isn't connected, sequences will not fire. So if you're confused about why you're setting up sequences and you're not receiving them, that's why you need to have the bot connected to a page. And also, if you're wondering why a sequence fired for you once, but you're trying to test it a second time and it's not working, you need to make sure that you always unsubscribe from the sequence between tests. So for example, if you wanted to test this onboarding sequence a second time when you've already gone through it before, you'd want to at the top of this block include an unsubscribe from sequence plugin and type in onboarding. So then you're getting unsubscribed and resubscribing, it'll fire again for you. So just some quick tips on how to use sequences. Remember to always use those message tags so you're complying with Facebook policies. And in the next lesson, we'll talk more about Facebook's policies for broadcasting and using sequences.